Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to go for a little bit of an adventure across our galaxy and maybe even some other galaxies and look for the largest stars we've discovered to date. So let's actually go and explore them in Space Engine and let's see what they look like leaving our planet Earth behind. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And we're actually going to go down the list that I made in the previous video using uh, Space Engine here. We're going to try to find all of those top 10 largest stars in Space Engine and take a look at what they have in their systems. And let's just start with the largest star that we know, which is, of course, UYSQ Tai. This star is really, really far away. It's uh, somewhere in the direction of uh, the central black hole. It's actually hidden by the um, interstellar dust here, so we can't really see it very easily. Uh, but it's in this direction. It's at a distance of about 9,500 light years away from us. So we're going to jump to it using the space engine. We're going to fly through our galaxy and end up in the region where UIS Qtai red supergiant is located. Now, in the previous video, I mentioned that this particular star is something like uh, 1,708 radii of the sun in size. So this right here is like um, 1,700 times as big as our sun. And uh, as you can see, it has a very interesting deformed shape. And this is because we don't really know um, where the star star uh, starts and where it ends because these upper layers have such a low density that it would be very difficult to actually point at the exact point where the star has its outer shell. Now, what do we know about this star? Well, we know that it's not particularly massive. It's maybe anywhere between 10 to maybe 25 masses of sun. And it, but it is very luminous. It's actually 340,000 times as luminous as, um, as our own sun. And I just changed the way that this game processes visual effects. So you can actually see that it's actually quite bright. And let's accelerate time a little bit. So you can actually see how this star also flares out a lot and is throwing away quite a lot of material. And so this is UIS Qtai, and in this particular simulation, it unfortunately doesn't actually have any other objects orbiting around it. It's all by itself because we don't really know if it has any planets or not. Next on the list is this star right here. This star is uh, called WOHG64, and this is the second largest star we've ever discovered. But the interesting thing about it, if you watched the previous video, is that it's actually located somewhere else. This right there is our Milky Way. This star is located in a different galaxy. It's, it's in the neighboring galaxy of the Large Magellanic Cloud. So if I were to uh, leave this particular star, which you can kind of see, it's very, very bright, very, very large. You'll see it for quite a long time as we leave this particular um, area. It's in the Large Magellanic Cloud, which is one of the uh, nearest galaxies to us. And this star is very well visible. You can see it from far away. Uh, there's another star you can see, and it's this right here. If you can guess what this is, you win the prize of being smart. And this star right here is, I believe, uh, one of the Doratus stars. I think it's S Doratus, actually. Uh, let's try to find out what this is. This is not the biggest star, so that's why we're not actually talking about it, but I'm still curious to find out what is this bright object. Yes, it's S Doratus. Uh, it's a white hypergiant. There's a lot of other stars we can actually see in the Magellanic Cloud, uh, but this one is the brightest and also the largest by volume. Not by mass, by volume. And the next star on the list is actually the fourth largest star. It's Western Wound uh, 126. Uh, we don't really have the third largest star in Space Engine for some reason, and I couldn't find it. It's the star by the name of RW Cephe, and I think it just hasn't been added yet. Uh, maybe in the future version we'll have it, but for now, we're going to go to the fourth largest star, which is actually this right here. Uh, this is Western with 126, and um, the interesting fact about it is that it's actually located inside a globular cluster. Uh, you'll see that it has several companions around it. There they are. And this is a, a kind of a smaller uh, globular cluster that you can see right here. It's kind of um, relatively well represented in the game. Maybe not super realistic, but you can see it right there. And um, definitely doesn't compare to some of the larger globular clusters. Like, for example, this gigantic one that I just saw right there. 
and I'm gonna try to show you in a second what is this one I don't even know what that is actually so yeah that definitely doesn't compare to whatever this is and I believe the name for this is oh okay so it was already showing it was called um NGC 5139 so this is a much much larger globular cluster definitely uh much bigger than the one I just showed you Anyway, moving on to the next star, and this one is called V354 Cephei. And V354 Cephei is about 9,000 light years away from our planet Earth. And in this game, it actually has several planets orbiting around it, which I think we're going to explore in one of the um, different videos, because I wanted to talk about how these planets actually survive being around these uh, huge, huge giants. So I'm going to actually um, just briefly fly through the system, show you what it looks like. It is a pretty large system. Uh, and the interesting thing about this particular star is that we actually don't even know its true size. It varies way, way too much. So it's kind of hard to tell the true size of this particular object. All right, next is uh, KY Cygnii, which is approximately 1400 radii in terms of radius. And it's located about 5,000 light years away from us. And um, this is one star that surprised us when we discovered that it actually loses the most mass. It seems to actually throw off a huge amount of mass compared to some of the other giants. In other words, it's losing a tremendous amount of material. Um, and because of that, it actually varies a lot and seems to indicate that we don't really know its true size either. It could be as big as, you know, twice the size actually. So we don't really know if this, this might be the biggest star out there. Okay, let's go to another famous star. This time it's going to be VY Canis Majoris. And VY Canis Majoris used to be the biggest star we ever knew, but then we discovered all the other ones. And as you can see, it also has a planetary system here. And uh, in terms of size, it's about 17 masses of the sun. It's about 3,900 light years away from us. And uh, although it doesn't actually show in this game, it, has a, uh, it actually has a huge nebula around it which it actually um, sort of powers. It powers a very, very large nebula that was probably created by various companion stars that were in this area that went supernova. Unfortunately, it's not yet present in, um, in Space Engine. Hopefully they'll add it in one of the future versions of the game. Next is A.H. Scorpii, which is about 7,400 light years away from us. And um, this one, is uh well it's it's a it's a big star it's a variable star it changes its luminosity once in a while um but we don't really know much about it other than that because it's covered in interstellar dust this area is actually very heavily dusted so it's very difficult for us to see and to try to study this star because unless we use a very powerful infrared telescope we can't even see it we can't actually even see the star from earth even though it's very large and very very luminous um, but anyway, moving on to the next star, VX Sagittarii. And VX Sagittarii is right here in front of you. As you can see, they all kind of look the same. They all have this very unusual broken down shape and uh, they all have very, very huge size. I actually want to show you what the surface of this will look like as well. Because if I, if I decide to land here, it will look like I'm flying some sort of molten mountains. Basically looks like a tremendously scary landscape that you can't even imagine. It's like here, the surface would be essentially very, very unusual plasma mixed with a lot of um, hydrogen and helium. And basically it wouldn't even be that dense. You wouldn't even feel it. You would obviously feel, feel the heat, but um, the density here is, is like a million times lower than the density of atmosphere on Earth, so that's why we have these very unusual shapes that are formed. So uh, this particular star is uh, interesting because it actually changes its temperature by about a thousand degrees. It goes from about 3,500 to about 2,500, and because of that changes its luminosity as well. So this is a very unusual star as well. Okay, next is HR5171. And the next star I'm going to show you is, um, it's a less known star by the name of uh, the Garnet star, also known as uh, Herschel's Garnet star, or Mu uh, Cephei. And uh, this particular star, um, I believe is like number 12 or number 13 in terms of size now. Uh, and I had to skip a few stars because they are once again not present 
in in Space Engine. But this this one is actually very interesting. This is a starter that we've known about for a long time. It's actually quite beautiful, uh, but it is not as large as some of the other stars. But look at that. It actually has a planet that orbits very very close to the actual star now remember these are procedurally generated so we don't really know if this is true but in this case it'd be interesting to actually take a look at what this particular planet even looks like and what kind of uh, parameters it might actually have so there's it seems to be two planets here because it has a berry center so there's going to be two planets orbiting one another making this a dual planetary system and we seem to have Garnet Star 1 1 and Garnet Star 1. This is a scorched desert with a temperature of, oh, okay, 2200 degrees Celsius. That's a little bit too, too hot. If you were to stand on the surface of this planet and if you were to look into the skies, you would actually be seeing this extremely unusual, is absolutely awesome view with a tremendously large star in your skies and actually a little moon or I guess a, a planetary partner orbiting right there and so we're gonna actually uh, see if we can get into the night here and look at what uh, is going to be created here look at this this is absolutely absolutely tremendous and so anyway so this was a star by the name of uh, Mu Cephei and let's take a look at the last one this is probably not a very well-known star either. And this one is going to be a star by the name of B.I. Cygnii. Another red luminous supergiant that uh, has something right there. And this is a Scorched Selena. I think this is actually the only object present. Oh, no, never mind. There's actually quite a lot of objects here. I totally did not see these. Yeah, so there's also quite a lot of planets here. These are, once again, procedurally generated. Uh, but this one is even hotter than the one around Mu uh, So uh, this particular star is, once again, a very large uh, supergiant with very similar parameters to the other ones, meaning that it's, it's a variable star, it changes quite a lot, and um, we don't really know its true size either, but currently it stands at approximately 1240 uh, solar radii, so it's, it's about maybe 70% of the size of the largest star, which is UIS Qutai. And if you were ever wondered what it might look like from this particular planet, here is your view. It's absolutely, uh, absolutely terrifying, actually. Let's actually maybe take a look at this from the farthest planet in the system, because it would be interesting to see that as well. But you know what? That's actually all I wanted to show you in this video because I think it's getting a little bit too long. So maybe we'll continue this in one of the next parts. Let's take a look at the last planet here, land on it and find out what uh, the view from this planet is like if we're looking at the star known as B.I. Cygnii. And this is actually a gas giant, very interesting, with a temperature of 127 degrees Celsius and quite a lot of its own moons. And I think at least one of these will probably have a really good temperature for us to live on. There you go. There's one right there. Oh, wait. No, that's an asteroid. And anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all of your support. And don't forget to come back tomorrow to check out another video and to learn something else from it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, do consider subscribing because there's so many more videos that are going to be coming in the future. And anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And it seems that from this distance, star actually looks really, really small. I didn't expect it to be that small. I guess this planet is very, very far away. And is this a habitable world? Yes, it is. Look at that. It's a warm Terra. Let's go and take a look at it. So this is a moon orbiting um, a planet around a red supergiant. And it seems to actually have liquid water. That is absolutely incredible. Look at that. We found a terraformed world with water on it and relatively comfortable temperature of 31 degrees Celsius. That's a good ending for this video. Anyway, see you guys later. Let's go for a swim. Space out. And as always, bye bye.